If a gang of Russian mobsters kidnapped you and your friends so they could broadcast your slow and painful torture online, what would you do? Turns out, we crossed the wrong group of guys, and they're not gonna rest until we learn our lesson. Oh, and just to make things worse, our idiot friends had to drag us halfway across the globe to do an escape room. So we'll be completely trapped in a foreign environment while a band of violent criminals hunts us down like dogs. Good thing we're planning on live streaming our current location the entire time. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the Russian Mafia in No Escape. Cole is an influencer, the insufferable kind, so basically just an influencer. The brunt of his content pretty much revolves around him reacting to his own crazy experiences while low-key flexing his immense wealth on his audience of mindless bug people. And this current endeavor is no exception. This time around, they're heading to Moscow to partake in some super high-end escape room. But of course, not before getting chocolate wasted out on the town with their well-connected and even wealthier friend, Alexei, who's joined the party as their spiritual guide to all things Rusky. Eventually, things start heating up when some of the local wildlife takes a liking to Cole's special lady friend, Aaron, forcing Cole to pry himself from his two biggest fans and act like a man for a few seconds. Only, the things don't really go his way, and Alexei's world-class de-escalation skills don't help the situation either. <laughs> Nice one, dude. You brought an embarrassingly small knife to a gunfight. Lucky for us, Igor and Igor showed up to take out the trash before Baldi clacked off an international incident. This whole debacle is a great example of knowing when to commit to violence. Aaron was actively being assaulted at that point, and Cole starts pulling her away by the arm like a stolen teddy bear. If you're going to do anything at all in this situation, blast that sucker behind the ear with an overhand right, and then light the other one up while his hands are full. Anyone with eyes could see that these guys had already launched a unprovoked attack, so approaching them with anything less than Doom Slayer energy will only result in your dumb getting choke slammed, which is exactly what happened. Of course, things never should have gotten this bad in the first place, because Alexei's bodyguards should have already been in the room guarding our bodies. Why on earth would you keep them out of sight in a place like this, especially when it's frequented by the kind of people that would try kidnapping random women in front of God and everybody? Speaking of which, those two nutjobs clearly aren't over this, as evidenced by the obscene gesture Eager number 3 makes on his way out. Out. Yeah, something tells me that's not the Russian symbol for peace and forgiveness. Oh yeah, and he also tells us we're f***ed in English, so that's a pretty good indication. Nerds, Father's Day is coming up, and you know what that means. Buying man things for the big man. What's more manly than the Ridges Base Camp orange wallet, bolt action pen, and key case? Well, probably a lot of things, like a bad... Traeger grill. But let's be real, you don't have the money for it, or don't care enough about your dad to pull the trigger on it. You need something that's passably masculine, fairly inexpensive, and actually functional. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say your pops ain't gonna be sipping on wild turkey while sharpening a hunting knife. No. So go to ridge.com slash nerd explains and get him a sturdy Ridge wallet so he can carry up to 12 credit cards with an elastic strap or money clip for all those $100 bills dads always seem to be carrying around. Get him a fancy Ridge pressurized ballpoint pen with a CNC lathe knurled textured grip to sign checks that put those bagel bites on your plate. Get him a slim and silent ridge key case to lock up his house before tucking you in for bed. Get him a slim silicone lined ridge coin tray to carry his shillings and blue chews. Get the best offer on all the above with a link ridge.com slash nerd explains and right now you can save up to 40% through June 15. Anyway, why let a couple bad Bad beats spoil the whole borscht. After all, Moscow's a huge city, so what are the odds we'll run into them again? Well, here's the thing. Cole, you know, the guy who's so famous a couple random Russian chicks sniffed him out immediately, is planning to livestream their go at the escape room tomorrow night. Meaning, anyone who knows who he is and how to watch will know exactly where to find him and when he'll be going in and out. Now, ordinarily, this wouldn't be that big of a deal. After all, it's just a couple random 
random wasted lowlives who will probably abandon their mission of revenge once the hangover sets in. But even Alexi is afraid of these guys, and it's implied that he pretty much owns the cops. Meanwhile, he tried talking Cole out of intervening as they were forcing themselves on his girlfriend. I'm not saying we ought to bag this entire op and flee back to Burgerland where they can't get us, but how about we just record this one and air it live after the fact? It's not like anyone will be able to tell the difference, and it'll help ensure no one can monitor our location in real time. Either way, we should have Alexi tell his goons to bring more than just a couple crappy Makarovs in case things get crazy. We all know the bad guys will. The following night, Cole and company get chauffeured out to a nondescript warehouse out in the industrial district. Basically, the perfect place to make five obnoxious tourists vanish off the face of the earth. Yeah, live stream or no, I'm sending my location to a few loved ones stateside and establishing a check-in time, just in case the Russian version of an escape room involves organ harvesting. Before going in, Alexei sets the mood with some final words of encouragement. Having experienced this operation firsthand, he assures everyone that no matter how insane things get after walking through the front door, they'll never actually be in real danger. And while we haven't seen or heard anything that would make us doubt this notion, how many people have died doing something perfectly safe? Yet another reason why forking over our cell phone to set up the live stream is a bad idea. Just send the MP4 when this is all over, and we'll figure it out. No way I'm giving up my comms. GPS, mobile banking, flashlight, translator, and raid shadow legends in some far off foreign filled with bears and mobsters. Once inside, Team USA gets a brief rundown of the situation before a couple more Igors and Gulag cosplay bag them up and bring them to their starting positions. The instructions are fairly straightforward. Cole will have to rescue his friends one by one before the time runs out, or they will all be executed. No reason to ask what that entails, right? Nah, the only thing Cole's concerned about is where to find the nearest camera so he can phone in some more wild reactions. Actions. This is crazy. Let the games begin. Right off the bat, it's pretty obvious this is not your typical escape room. Most apparent is the lack of a clearly marked emergency exit, which, while par for the course in the stateside equivalent, might only be considered optional over here. The door leading back to the starting area is also locked, so we're genuinely at the mercy of the organizers unless we can find a way out on our own. I'm sure this is usually the part where they mention the $250,000 price tag on this thing. That said, this first room seems pretty straightforward. Locked door, dude on a slab, X marks the spot. Not sure what the piles of clothes are all about, but they could very well just be a red herring meant to run down the clock. Regardless, we don't exactly need Jigsaw to talk us through this one. Just grab one of the generously provided cutting instruments and get to work. Of course, if you're like Cole, you'll probably want to make sure you're not about to carve up a living person. Slashing the carotid artery ought to take care of that, I guess you could also listen for a heartbeat and or place your hand over his nose to feel for breathing. Realistically, this has to be a very <clears throat> realistic dummy. That is, unless Russian law surrounding organ donations prioritizes tourist traps over actual recipients. Still, if you're concerned at all about slicing into the real thing, just make a small cut on the arm and smell the blood. As long as it doesn't have that characteristic metallic smell, you should be good to go. Obviously, Colsey right through this thinly veiled gross out play and dives right in. And sure enough, the key is right where it's supposed to be. Awesome. One down, who knows how many to go. Probably a good reason to head straight to the next area, instead of wasting time chatting up your friends about the set dressing. Fortunately for Thomas and Dash, the next challenge is just as simple as the first. Here's Cole, breaking it down for his audience of eight-year-olds. I'm using gears to solve puzzles to save my friends' lives. Lives are at stake. And yet, you're standing around doing nothing while your friends bemoan their rapidly dwindling lifespans. I mean, is it just me, or do these torture devices seem like actual torture devices? The spikes on that Iron Maiden look dangerously sharp. 
even if they're just made of plastic. And Thomas is outright telling you he's in pain as that rack gets tighter and tighter. In that case, you might want to get a move on before you lose monetization. The good news is that it's just basic trial and error, complete with audio cues to let us know whether we're putting each gear in the right place. Only strat for this one is working faster. But with as much time as Cole's wasted going in, just about anyone else could have done this all blindfolded. Now that I think about it, maybe the reason they claim this is all perfectly safe is because they've never had a client as stupid as Cole before. Oh, well, on to the next one. And what a surprise, another stumper. All we have to do is move the cursor through the maze and we're done with an interesting penalty for air. I guess it goes around. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah, at this point, I think it's safe to say they lied about the danger level of this thing. It's possible they were planning to hit the e-stop before Thomas and Dash were both eviscerated, but in this case, Sam is actively being tortured. That said, I still don't think we're actually getting sawed right now. Yes, the stakes are crazy, but these are the same people who invented slap boxing for Christ's sake. I can only imagine this kind of equipment is standard issue on any Russian playground. And then there's the puzzles. You'd think if they were trying to kill us, they'd at least make them somewhat difficult to piece together. But I mean, just look at this bull- it's the kind of maze you'd find on the back of a cereal box. The only difficult part is not touching the sides, which could be easily overcome by carefully guiding the thing with both hands. Seriously, dude, it's like you're trying to shock her. Nah, this whole thing just doesn't add up. They let us live stream everything right up to the start, including all their faces and the outside of the building. Why would they do that if they were planning to kill us? Which is exactly what we're led to believe would happen if we didn't act quickly. Either way, we should try pulling the plug before things get any worse. Best case scenario, they stop everything immediately and let us off the hook. Only problem is, they never actually told us we could call it quits whenever we want. In that case, we should try to force their hand in the matter, and the only way I can really see to do that would be by faking some kind of medical emergency. To that end, I'd have Sam collapse and fake a heart attack since she just had the absolute shocked out of her. If there's any legitimacy to this outfit at all, they'll cut the act immediately and rush to her aid. Otherwise, well, at least we'll know the totality of how screwed we are. And speaking of screwed, this next stage really kicks things up a notch. Guys, get over here. Oh, Aaron, oh, shit, Aaron, are you okay? Chill out, dude. She's obviously fine. Not for long, though. Fortunately, we're looking at yet another life-threatening situation with a painfully simple solution. This time, it's nothing more than a fifth grade level logic problem. So, yeah, she's basically f Nah, I'm kidding. They're not that stupid. Well, not Thomas, at least. All we have to do is measure out four liters of water using two jugs marked at five and three liters, respectively. Before we continue, go ahead and solve this one down in the comments. That way, we can all have a good laugh at your expense if you somehow manage to get it wrong. Okay, pencils down, folks. As Thomas points out, we just need to use the five liter jug to fill the three liter jug, thus leaving the former with only two liters remaining. From there, we dump out the three liter and pour in the remaining two, thereby leaving a single liter of empty space in the three liter jug. All that's left to do now is fill up the fiber and use it to top off the three, thereby leaving us with exactly four liters. Piece of cake. However, this is where the latest phase deviates from the others, as solving the puzzle only opens the cell without actually shutting off the water hazard. That said, it appears to be by design, as the organizers left us some steps ladders we can use to reach the top of the tank. The problem is the valve handles sealing the hatch are supposedly rusted shut. Although, if I had to guess, it probably has more to do with the fact that you morons are turning it to the right. Like, I, I get there's plenty of things out there using left-hand threads, but maybe at least try the standard approach first before going the other way. Ultimately, Cole makes the executive decision to end the whole thing here and now, but neither Alexi nor the organizers respond over the intercom, so yeah, not good. At this point, anyone that still has their cell phone should dial 101 and get EMS on the way, or at least try to. None of us actually speak Russian, and with only around 11% of Russians speaking English, Aaron will probably be blue by the time they send someone out to help us. Of course, as fast as that thing is filling up, there's literally zero chance someone would be able to make it here in time anyway. So no matter what, we're gonna have to be our own first responders right now. In that case, I'm grabbing one of those heavy metal gears we used back in the second room and smashing 
out of the pipe feeding into the box. At least if there's no more water flowing in, we'll have more time to work on that hatch. At the same time, if I'm Aaron in this situation, the very first thing I would have done upon seeing the water run in is ball up my shirt to try and jam up the waterworks. Unfortunately, by the time Cole figures this out, it seems Aaron's already swimming with the fishes. She's not breathing. Oh Aaron, what do we do? Aaron. Give her mouth to mouth. <coughs> oh, never mind. Turns out she's okay. Well, thank God for that, because there's no way any of these bozos knew what to do next. Sam wanted Cole to start CPR without even checking her vitals. Also, according to WebMD, it's just chest compressions for adults. And naturally, that's only after you've established they don't have a pulse. Anyway, getting back to the matter at hand. Now that we've solved all the puzzles and recovered the last of our friends, we can use the key Aaron was holding to let ourselves out and end this nightmare. That is, of course, after we've savagely mashed Alexi's head to a quivering pulp with one of those giant gears. Sadly, we may never get that chance, as the entire operation seemingly flew the coop before we made it out. Although by the looks of it, they didn't get far. We're gonna stick together and find help. Stop! Put a shot. We'll Ah, oh, man, how did he find us? That certainly explains why Alexi and them quit responding all of a sudden. Ah, oh, well, none of that matters now that we're all definitely going to die. Not only are they taking us to a second location, we've already seen their faces, and they have a bone to pick with us. Besides, they already smoked Victoria and both of our Igors. No sense in stopping now. Of course, there's also the slim possibility this is still just part of the escape room. Think about it. One of the last things Alexi said to us was that no matter how real it gets, it's only a game. Yes, I know, so is Russian Roulette. But given everything we've been through so far, is it really out of the question that they might fake an execution or two to keep us on edge? Just take Victoria's death, for example. That looked fake as- the only problem is, I can't tell whether it was supposed to be that bad, or if the studio simply blew the entire budget on anatomically correct dummies. Obviously, we shouldn't jump to that conclusion while our lives might be at stake, but it would certainly explain why Big Igor had his goons place us in an easily escapable jail cell and then leave us alone immediately. I mean, just look at these handcuffs, for Christ's sake. You mean to tell me these dudes can afford G-Wagons and automatic weapons, but they couldn't scrounge up an actual pair of modern handcuffs. Even zip ties would have worked better. At least then he couldn't have just bashed them against the bed frame a few times to cut himself loose. Oh, and then there's the totally secure grate covering the perfectly man-sized ventilation shaft. And what do you know? It's not even bolted in place. Again, it's far from the worst we've seen on this channel in terms of villain stupidity. So this really might be the best they got. But if someone was gonna fake a hostage situation and make some brain-dead TikToker feel like an action star, what exactly would they be doing? Doing differently right now. Okay, rant over. All we know for sure is that we have a way out, so we should definitely be taking it. Cole is at least smart enough to put that one together. Unfortunately for him, the ducks run right alongside the set his hosts are using to film a live stream of their own. Well, say goodbye to your piano career. Yeah, it turns out these guys heard about all those dark web red rooms that don't actually exist and thought it sounded like a solid business plan. They're not just going to murder these morons. They're going to monetize the mayhem by airing it live for an audience of bloodthirsty psychopaths with access to daddy's credit card. Although, if that's the case, I gotta wonder why they totally blue ball all their paying customers by blocking the camera during the best part. You know, the splatter of blood and sinew and pieces of bone, not to mention the mix of horror and agony on the Mark's face as he's violently disassembled. Come to think of it, they did the same thing with Sam's execution when we were still back in the jail cell. What, are you streaming this on YouTube? There's no way in hell I'd be shelling out for such garbage cinematography. At least throw on a GoPro or something, come on. Also, why wasn't there a camera back in Cole's cell? You went through all the trouble of setting up a TV so he could watch it all. Why not spin that into a reaction video? Annoying Going reacts. Dude is the main attraction after all, so I'm sure people would love to watch him emotionally disintegrate at the sight of friends and loved ones leaving piece by piece. This is an absolute failure to capitalize on killer content. Much like how the Big Bad's henchmen completely fail at basic room clearing. All you have to do is keep one man back to cover the left side of the barrier, while the other man sweeps wide around to the right side. This way the target can't simply run the okie dokie on your- 
until he inevitably finds something he can use as a distraction. I know, I know, this doesn't prove anything, but God, it all just seems a little too easy, don't you think? Now, for the next obstacle. Cole has to make it past this big red door, which just so happens to have the same rusky writing on it as the note the chauffeur passed him earlier that day. And would you look at that? He gave him the door code. Yeah, that's super helpful and all, but why not also leave a warning on the note so he never even has to use the code in the first place? And I don't mean your typical secret helper bullsh- like, you're in danger. Literally, write this down verbatim. The escape room is a trap. You're going to be kidnapped by the mob. Leave while you can. Clearly, he knew this was all going to happen, or he wouldn't have left him the door code to begin with. Ah, uh, well, I guess now's our chance to ask him about it since he's conveniently waiting for us on the other side of the door. No, 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 no. I have been trying to help you. Take my car, please go. They're coming. Who's coming? Who do you think? Ugh, you know what? Never mind. Just shut up and take the car keys before you find out the hard way. Real or not, this is 100% our best shot at escaping this nightmare. Well, what, the f what about my friends? Bro, screw your friends. As far as you know, two of them are already dead, and the other two are well on their way. Besides, these guys have guns, numbers, and power tools, along with a proven willingness to take human lives. You have literally none of these things. Take the keys, drive like Find a phone, dial plus seven four nine five seven two eight five thousand to reach the U.S. Embassy in Russia. Pray you can get an emergency passport made within a few hours. Leave the horrible place forever and buy a new entourage stateside. Let the State Department handle this mess. And by that, I mean ignore it completely. Nah, let's face it. We all know Cole's going back in there. All we can do now is hope there's anyone left to save. And sure enough, it's not long before he finds Thomas curled up inside one of the cells. Only there's a problem. Somewhere along the way, Velma lost his glasses, leaving him functionally blind to the point Cole will have to guide him by the hand the rest of the way. Yeah, that's a negative. If this is legit, it's nothing short of a miracle we were even able to make it this far by ourselves. And now we're supposed to babysit this guy too? Forget it. Dude's gonna stumble on literally everything between here and the exit and give away our position, which he does almost immediately. I'm not suggesting we simply leave him where we found him. But why not sit him down somewhere out of sight while we try to bring back help? Under the drainage grate seems like a pretty good option, provided he can keep his mouth shut. And if we don't make it out, well, then he probably wasn't getting out anyway. Of course, had we taken this approach, he couldn't have totally saved our life with this noble sacrifice play. <laughs> Dude, this totally fake. As in, we're still in the escape room. Not because Igor ran at us while shooting like an absolute mutant. We've seen that plenty of times out of actual horror villains. And not because Thomas could suddenly see well enough to shove us out of the way with impeccable timing. It's fake because the guy had us dead to rights, trapped down a narrow passage with no way out. And he chose to unnecessarily end his own life by running in to tackle us over the edge. Like, it didn't matter whether he hit Cole or Thomas. There's no way he he could have possibly stopped himself in time to avoid falling down the elevator shaft. Something he wouldn't have been concerned about if he knew there was a stunt cushion down there. I mean, are we really supposed to believe Butcher Bro was so dedicated to his job, he'd throw his life away for no reason when he could have casually walked up and shot us both to death. Oh, and it turns out that revolver he was using was only loaded with the three rounds of ammunition he expended in the process. How convenient. I guess the Russian Mafia is really tightening the belt these days. We should absolutely pop the cylinder and examine the shell casings to see if they're crimped like blanks. That would pretty much seal the deal, as far as I'm concerned. That said, if you're still not convinced, then get a load of this. <laughs> Wow, if it isn't another execution with someone's back obstructing the view. I guess now we know why they did the same thing with Sam and Dash. Still, that's not what I'm talking about here. As you can clearly see, Alexi is not only still alive, he's also running this show, which means he either killed his girlfriend and two of his goons just to screw with us, or they're all still alive. And that whole thing was just meant to scare us. You know, more than a gang of heavily armed criminals holding us at gunpoint already 
would. Sure, on one hand, I could totally see the former being true because Russian mob, but I think it's more likely door number two. All this aside, I've definitely been wrong before, so we shouldn't just go tap dancing around the corner expecting a hug and not a bullet. Instead, we'll want to test this out somehow, and I think my previous strat of staging a medical emergency would still be our best bet. If we are being pranked, I think it's safe to assume it's all being filmed, meaning they've probably wired this place up with far more cameras than we realize. In that case, I'd look for an area where no one should otherwise be able to see us and attempt to fake a grand mall seizure by collapsing to the ground and thrashing with all my strength for as long as I could keep it up. If they have any intention of keeping us safe, as Alexi previously stated, they'll almost certainly intervene, even if it's just to stop everything and call an ambulance. Of course, if it is true that we're all still in the matrix, it means basically everyone else but Cole was in on the joke, including Sam, Dash, and Thomas. And judging by all her extremely fresh and seemingly deep facial wounds that aren't bleeding profusely for some reason, I'd say Aaron is too. <laughs> Yeah, she's in on it. God, dude, what did you do to all your friends to make them hate you this much? Hmm, on second thought, the list of what he didn't do is probably shorter. Also, if this were actually legit, it would have been a better idea to rush the bad guy and attempt to take control of his firearm, than go fumbling for loose rounds with all the adrenaline coursing through your veins. It's probably not gonna happen, at least not before he recovers. And as Cole found out the hard way, what if the one round you barely managed to feed in time doesn't do the job? Oh well, good thing it doesn't matter, because because Aaron's definitely still alive. And much like when he first arrived in this pit, once again, the good squad arrives to place Cole in yet another easily escapable situation. Only this time, they're definitely gonna wish they made things a little harder for him. Turns out, Alexi was waiting on our hero to reach this point since the big reveal of his survival. And now here he is, all alone, armed with nothing but Cole's cell phone. It's almost too perfect. Go, go, please! Ah, fuck you! I'll fucking kill you! Yeah, saw that coming. Question is, why didn't Alexi? I mean, he knew Cole bought this whole thing hook, line, and sinker. Obviously, he was going to beat the living shit out of him given the opportunity. Seriously, all he had to do here was keep the Igors by his side, and the mother of all awkward turtle events could have been avoided. Oh, great, you're all here. Now, each and every one of you can line up to get the exact same makeover Alexi just got. No, for real, even if Cole could have potentially seen this coming. The fact that they all went to such extraordinary lengths to psychologically torment him, literally to the point where he'd been made to think his own ineptitude got his girlfriend executed, is so profoundly fucked up. At least to make sure you're standing next to Alexi when he shows up, so you don't trick the poor idiot into throwing his life away. The good news is that at least Cole can say he legitimately feared for his life in this situation. How far that'll get him after brutally killing a Russian millionaire, however, is anyone's guess. Probably not far though. In the end, only Alexei wound up dying. However, had Cole paid closer attention to the outright absurdity of what was going on around him during the later stages of the escape room, he might have seen this twist coming in time to keep from splattering the fool. That said, a far more reliable means of preventing this would be if the pranks had thought to leave even a single bodyguard or one of the friend group with Alexi at the finish line. For that reason, I think no escape was beat. Moral of the story, no one to let them off the hook. <laughs>